Hey Randy here from Glacierware. Uh, today's informational video is on the mustelid family, commonly known as weasels. Uh, the mustelid uh, description is because they have two musky glands, scent glands, that are on either side of the tail. Uh, which, uh, you know, going back in history, if you called somebody a weasel, they were dishonest, uh, you know, not trustworthy. Uh, really, you should have been calling them that they, they were stinky. <laughs> anyway, uh, I actually had an experience one time when, when, when I was mountain lion and hunting in Montana, where uh, in the middle of the winter, we went in on a mountain lion track that we were chasing with the dogs and walked, went into a deer kill and it smelled like skunk and this was like February with two feet of snow and everybody was kind of you know wondering why the heck it smelled like skunk in the middle of the winter because they were all hibernating and uh, turns out a wolverine had claimed the uh, the deer kill urinated all over it and it stunk like skunk uh, which goes with the Native American uh, name for a wolverine as a, the skunk bear anyway we'll start with the smaller North American ones which is a short tail weasel. And you can kind of see here some of the color phases, but this is a short tailed weasel, otherwise known as an ermine. The ermine is a, it is a weasel in its white color phase. This is the short tail. This is the long tail. Uh, these are some of the color phases. But this would be the beginning. This would be the fall, early fall, mid fall. So they're still brown with the white belly, and here's the transitioning color phase to white. Okay, the next one up would be a mink. This is just a North American mink. This is an eastern mink. Eastern mink run a little bit darker, more of a mahogany type color. Show you the difference between a ranch raised mink, so a farm raised mink, and a wild mink. This would be a pastel here. This would be a 5-0, which translates into a 5XL if it was clothing. Just some of the other colors. Demi Wild. So this is a wild colored farm raised mink. Mahogany, just a little bit darker, has a little bit of red tone to it. This is a polar. This is a violet, or today it's called a silver blue. Black, most common color of uh, ranch raised mink. And white. And going up next, this is known by several names, with nicknamed a polecat, but it's a fitch also in the fur industry, but it's a, fur, a ferret, a black footed ferret that's been domesticated. Badger. So this is a really nice uh, North American badger. It would be a spring badger. Much heavier fur. Really good color. This would be an AB, so you know, the best color you can get. You know, fairly clear under fur and, uh, and nice tips, silvery tips. This is a European badger. See, it's got a little bit wider stripe down the nose, extends to the back, more white on the sides, but very similar. Uh, this would be a fall badger, not quite as heavy, coarser skin, coarser fur. Uh, river otter. Now, this is a river otter. I could show you a sea otter, but uh, not legal, <laughs> and unless you're a native in, in the United States. Uh, but this is a good sized river otter, eastern again, so extra dark in color, but nice heavy winter prime skin. And this is an eastern or main pine martin. So the pine martin is still in the weasel family, also known as a sable. This is a Russian sable or a bomb martin. Quite a lot larger. Uh, very heavily furred, and you can kind of see the difference in the size. The Russians are definitely the biggest and most heavily furred. Martin in the wild. There's a fisher. Uh, I always imagined a fisher 
is the, the link in between a marten and a wolverine. Uh, this is a, a main fissure, you know, fairly dark uh, and uh, heavily furred, it's prime. Now the largest member of the weasel family is the wolverine. So the wolverine, you know, is known as the, the toughest animal pound for pound. Maybe some people might say the honey badger is, but uh, in North America this is the toughest animal. Pound for pound, very unique fur. It's somewhat coarse, but it won't hold frost, which is why it's been used a lot for Air Force parkas by the U.S. government and uh, used by natives, you know, in the Arctic uh, for parka roughs because when the ice clings to wolverine fur, all you have to do is shake your head and it falls right off. It won't adhere like it would on a wolf or a fox or a coyote. Uh, that pretty much uh, covers what we're doing today. I would like you all to please remember, don't let 2% of the population dictate what you can eat and what you can wear. Fight for your rights or somebody else will take them away. You have a great day. Thank you.